Okay, welcome back. So today we're going to be looking at a new sampling distribution for a new statistic, new parameter of interest. Right, that's the sampling distribution of the sample proportion. All right, so what have we been doing so far? We're working towards these ideas of statistical inference, and specifically we're, we're really focusing on point estimation. Right, using a specific statistic to estimate our parameter of interest. Now, confidence intervals, hypothesis tests, these are inference methods that we're going to see coming up in the future. All right, but basically what we want to do, what we're trying to do, is just move down this list and try to apply all of these ideas to these parameters of interest. All right, so far we've used x bar to try to estimate mu. All right, the next step is we're going to be moving down this list here to try to use this guy here, p hat, or our sample proportion, to estimate our population proportion. So we're going to be looking at something now that we put on the back burner for a little bit. We've, we've mostly been dealing with quantitative data lately. All right, but now we're going to get back into the idea of categorical data, categorical variables. Right? This is data where it, it sorts our individuals into categories or groups. Right, so something like if you're voting on an issue, the approval, ra the approval rating of the president, something like that. Or the instead of, we've looked at before, the weights of bags of pretzels, what about like the color of the bags of pretzels? Right? So how, how do we analyze data like this? Well, we can't, we can't deal with means, sample means, population means, stuff like this that we had before. Right? I can't find the average of a list of colors, or I can't find the average of a list of words. Right, but what we can do is we can count the number of occurrences of a, a specific category we might be interested in and call that a success. Right, and then we can calculate what we call our proportion from those number of successes. Like say I was looking at the president's approval rating. The way we find that would be take the number of people who approved or the number of successes they approve is the characteristic you're looking for. So I'm going to count my number of approvals divided by the total. That gives me my sample proportion, or what we call p hat. All right, p hat is a statistic that we use just like, just like before for quantitative data. What we've seen, x bar is a statistic we use to estimate the sample mean, right? p hat is a statistic we use when we're working with categorical data to estimate the population proportion. Okay, so p hat is how we we calculate it. And if you heard that word successes before, right, maybe you were thinking about this in a binomial context. Okay, and yes, the x, or our numerator here when we're calculating p hat, does actually have a binomial distribution. Maybe that's something we'll use in the future. Okay, so, so how do we perform inference here? Right, can I use p hat to estimate p? Well, remember what we did before, we had to see is x bar, is the sample mean, a good estimate of mu? By a good estimate in a statistic sense, Right, what we meant was, is it accurate and is it precise? Right, accuracy meant, does my sampling distribution seem to be centered around the parameter that I'm interested in? Right, the, that exact value there. And precision-wise, we were thinking about the spread of the sampling distribution. Okay, so we're going to do something similar. We're going to do a simulation style thing like we did we've seen before simulating the sampling distribution of x bar All right, and we're gonna do same idea here simulate the sampling distribution of p hat so let's say just for simplicity's sake we know the president's approval rating p is equal to forty percent or zero point four okay and let's say we're at 
a large university like ours, 35,000 students maybe. Okay, so we're going to repeatedly sample, take 1,000 samples of size 5, calculate the sample proportion or the approval rating for each of those samples, and then graph them. All right, remember the questions that we want to think about when we're doing these simulations. Of course, what does the shape look like? And we know shape-wise, we know what we're looking for, right? We're looking for normality because we the if we can standardize, then that's great. Things are easy when we can standardize. All right, so we're looking for normality. We want to think about what's the center look like, what does the spread look like, and does the spread seem to depend on something? Right now, a, a big thing that I want to think about here with this question, does the spread seem to depend on something? Remember this important relationship that we saw before. As our sample size went up, the spread of the sampling distribution or the standard error went down. Right? They have that inverse relationship. In other words, big samples are going to give us more precise results, more precise estimates. So we'll see with p hat and p, does this very important relationship still hold? All right, so a thousand samples of size five from this population calculate their calculate p hat and graph. So here's what that looked like. All right, so. To answer our questions, shape-wise, maybe a little bit right skewed. Center-wise, now we'll, in order for so remember we're trying to use p hat to estimate p. All right, we know p is 0.4. We're just assuming that we know what p is. We usually don't actually know the value of these parameters. All right, but let's assume p is 0.4. So if this is an accurate estimate, the center should be at about 0.4, and looks looks pretty good. I think our center is probably about 0.4. But what about our spread? So the spread, p hat, could be anything from 0 to 1, right? A proportion or a probability could be anything from 0 to 1. We've got approval ratings of zero down here we've got approval ratings of one or one hundred percent up here okay this, so the spread of this is pretty big n is five these are pretty small samples our spread is pretty big alright so probably slightly right skewed it looks like it looked to be accurate right the center looked pretty good right about point four right about where we wanted right but the spread it's pretty big, but to see how the spread is relative to something else, we need to repeat this process. We're going to bump up our sample size to see does the spread depend on a certain quantity. All right, so let's look at the actual numbers. The mean, right at 0.4, so pretty good, pretty accurate. Standard deviation, calculated a number, put a number on it. All right, I'm going to build another sampling distribution, assuming again P is 0.4, 35,000 students, big N is 35,000. Now I'm going to take 1,000 samples of size 100, right, rather than size 5. And we're going to try to answer the same questions. Remember the questions are shape, center, spread, and particularly here, how does the spread compare to when we looked at a thousand samples of size 5. Does the spread seem to depend on something? Alright, so our distribution here, I think it looks a lot more normal. Doesn't really look skewed anymore. And we do have something kind of weird going on out here, but looks pretty normal. Um, maybe kind of a weird outlier observation there. So, what about our center? Looks about where we want it, about 0.4. I think that's that's pretty good. Spread, we're going from 0.6 to 0.2 at the the very least. Our spread is getting smaller. All right, but I think the big thing here right, is that 
I think we'd be safe to say that that distribution looks symmetric. In fact, it looked pretty normal. Okay, our estimate was still accurate. The center was still where we wanted it to see, and it definitely got smaller. So let's compare the two again. This is n equal to 5. This is n equal to 100. All right, right skewed, looking normal. Overlaying a normal curve, looks pretty good. So we kept everything constant except changed the sample size. Right, when n was equal to 5, 1,000 samples of size 5, my mean, accurate, standard error, looked like that. For n equal to 100, though, interestingly enough, and this is just kind of an anomaly, but we actually were more accurate for n equal to 5. All right, but the big relationship that we saw before that we want to see does it still hold as n goes up, as for bigger sample sizes, what's happening to the spread or the standard error? It looks like it is still going down. All right, so that's so that's an important point to us here. Smaller standard error is more precise estimates. So in other words, as n goes up, the standard error goes down. More precise estimates, larger samples give us more precise estimates. Okay, so how do we how do we calculate this? Remember with x bar estimating mu for quantitative data, our standard error was sigma over the square root of n. All right, but we don't have sigma. We don't have. We aren't given anything like that. All we know is p is equal to 0.4. So how do we calculate the standard error for the sample proportion? Well, if you remember, so remember how we're calculating p hat. P hat is x over n, and we know x is actually a binomial. If you recall the binomial standard deviation, sigma square root n p times 1 minus p. Okay, so imagine taking this and dividing by n, what do you get? You get this. So this is the standard error for this of the sampling distribution of the sample proportion. So let's check that with our example. Get rid of this here. So with our example, when we had 1,000 samples of n equal to 100, our standard error, 0.47. But if I plug into this formula, remember we were assuming p was 0 0.4, 0 0.4, 1 minus 0.4 over 100. And we get that. So those are pretty darn close. All right, so what conditions do we have to meet? We know as n gets bigger, things turn normal. But hopefully you're, you're recalling a lot back to the binomial here. All right, remember the conditions we had to, to meet in order to use our normal approximation? Well, the conditions that we have to meet here look very, very similar to that. Right, we need n times p greater than 10, n times 1 minus p greater than 10 very similar to our normal approximation criteria. All right, we need good sampling techniques. And another thing that's kind of um, specific to this situation is we do need the population to be big relative to our sample size if we're sampling without replacement. All right, so that's something to think about, not a big deal. These are your main things to check. All right, so let's sum all that up and state our central limit theorem for proportions rather than for means. We've seen the central limit theorem with means. Here's the central limit theorem for proportions. All right, if our conditions hold, regardless of the distribution we're sampling from, all right, we can assume the sampling distribution of the sample proportion is normal, centered at P with standard error this quantity. All right, so it should look like this. Theoretically, this is what, if all of our conditions hold, it should look like this.